Lieutenant Jason Anderson is a senior investigator with Portland Fire and Rescue. Uh, and uh, and it was a busy night for, for arson investigators on Friday night. Uh, thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time, Lieutenant Anderson. My pleasure. Uh, so tell us, uh, we had there were two things that happened, uh, or two two different people that were arrested in separate incidents. And the first one happened on very, very early on Thursday morning, just after midnight on Thursday morning. Tell us That's a little good. bit about that when it was in the, as I understand it, the 2200 block of Southeast Salmon. Yeah, that's correct. So early that morning, uh, Portland Fire and Rescue, shortly after midnight, was dispatched on a residential fire. Um, while en route, uh, they had learned that the fire was being uh, attempted to be extinguished by one of the homeowners. When the first arriving company arrived, which was Engine 9, they still saw a fire on the front porch of an occupied residence. Um, they went and did what they do, which is they completely suppressed the fire. Um, and in the process of doing so, they realized some of the fire had actually extended up into sort of the concealed space of the upstairs second floor bedroom uh, area on the front of the house. Um, so uh, not knowing the cause of the fire, they went ahead and requested our investigators to respond to conduct an investigation into how and where exactly this fire started. Um, in the course of that investigation, uh, and, and I should note that we were actually had additional staffing working because of the uh, events that were occurring in the city of Portland. So it was great that we were able to have two investigators respond on this right off the bat. Um, and in the course of them working together, they very quickly uh, discovered what they thought might be an incendiary device on the front porch. Um, so uh, upon discovering that, they requested the use of my accelerant detection canine, Kiki, uh, to come to the scene. So uh, we were off duty. We responded in. We assisted in that investigation along with members of the ATF. Um, and in the process of utilizing my canine, um, she provided some alerts on the front porch, which sort of, you know, uh, allowed us to really kind of hone in on there. There definitely could be some accelerant that might have been used during this. And this could, in fact, be an incendiary device. Um, so, uh, you know, they were able to do that scene examination. We're able to kind of determine that more likely than not, this was an intentionally set fire, which was very concerning. Uh, are you uh, able to tell us what kind of an incendiary device it was? Uh, we can't describe it in, in detail. It mimics what would be like a Molotov cocktail, but it was definitely not a Molotov cocktail. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, it, it, it mimicked it, but it was not. So therefore, it's not something like that, but it's more just what we would consider an incendiary device. A container that contains accelerant and some means of igniting that particular container or, or a device on fire um, for the sole purpose of spreading fire more rapidly than typically would be normal. All right. We'll, we'll come back to this one then because I have a few more questions about that. But then yep. right after that person was arrested uh, and that person was Eric Johnson, we'll talk about Mr. Johnson later. Uh, you, There was another set of uh, th about three arsons that you responded to and another person was arrested. So tell us about that one. Yeah. So uh, shortly after uh, our unit had dealt with uh, the arrest of Mr. Alexander, um, there was a spree of about three fires that occurred all within about a 45 minute time span all out in Northeast Portland. Um, and uh, the on-duty investigators, again, we were upstaffed. We had two people on duty, which was excellent. Uh, they were able to respond very quickly. And then through the course of them both working together to get the investigations underway, they uncovered some surveillance video at the scene of the first fire uh, that showed a potential suspect. Um, and with that particular information, when we can get surveillance video like that, um, we were able to radio that to Portland police patrol officers, a description of a potential suspect. Um, and Portland police obviously had upstaffing as well. So they had a lot more patrol units out working last night on different missions and things like that. Um, at the time, the third fire had occurred, um, near 122nd and Stark area, uh, Patrol officers responded to kind of do an area check and they located a person matching the description that we had given out over that first fire, approximately two blocks away from that fire. They went ahead and detained her. In the process of doing that, uh, they were able to identify some distinguishing features of that individual that they recalled that we were actually looking for a person that we did not know their identity that had been responsible for several fires earlier in the month. Uh, and and so that person, uh, Crystal Noak, I believe is how you pronounce her name. Uh, she that is was, correct. She's the suspect in some fires from October 14th and also this three uh, fire uh, arson spree from uh, the other night. Is that correct? And we had an additional one on November 1st that we were able to confirm that she was involved in as well. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the first one then. Uh, you uh, you identified the suspect as a Mr. Alexander. Um, I thought his name was different. So who is the suspect in the first uh, arson from November 7th? That should have been Eric Alexander. 
Eric Alexander. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, great. And he's 42 years old. He's charged with uh, five counts of attempted murder, four counts of arson, two counts of stalking, two counts of telephonic harassment, two counts of menacing, and uh, one count of criminal mischief. So it sounds like uh, he knew who this was not a random act. Uh, the, 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 the belief is this person was targeting the people in that house. Is that correct? Yeah, once we had information that indicated that this was a targeted attack that obviously, you know, in, in, you know, prioritized and reprioritized the urgency and the need for us to be investigating this particular incident. Um, anytime we have a targeted attack like that, in general, something that involves an incendiary device, but let alone when it's targeted, um, that is something that uh, we want to, to get that re resolution to that as quickly as possible. Uh, and it, it's it's my understanding that uh, arson investigations don't always move along this rapidly. Sometimes it takes a lot longer to determine that there's there's an arson involved. But it sounds like in these particular cases, uh, it was pretty clear cut from the beginning. Is that correct? Well, sometimes, I mean, you know, the, the arson investigation or a fire investigation in general is something that does take time. It really does. Um, it's something that it takes a very special, highly trained set of group of individuals to be able to examine what's going on with that. A lot of times there's further analysis that's required through laboratories and things like that. And then it gets into further testing and things that may have to happen to rule out the accidental causes compared to the possibility of there being an intentional cause. Um, but having tools such as uh, our accelerant detection canine um, allowed us very quickly to to develop a more probable than not, there was an accelerant or ignitable liquid used in this particular fire, so that does increase. So while we see certain things that may resemble an incendiary device, having a canine that can say, you know, with their training and their talent, say this is an accelerant or an ignitable liquid, um, that does allow us to kind of tilt that needle to, hey, we believe this is intentional, we need to start moving on this. All right. Well, uh, Lieutenant Jason Anderson, uh, thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time. Uh, best of luck to you, sir, and, uh, and thanks for everything. My pleasure, thank you.